Hello and welcome to another Morales Minute. These are quick tips and sage advice to level up your Web3 game development. Hi, my name's Sam. I'm a Unity certified developer at Morales. I have over 20 years of game dev experience and more than 10 years experience as a digital nomad. I love spending time in nature and practicing sports, as well as drawing, painting, and making music. Together, we'll learn more about Web3 Gaming. Web3 Gaming technology, including decentralization, immutability, and transparency, enables new player experiences. Learn lessons from popular Web3 gameplay design to inspire your game development. Learn more about the Morales Web3 Unity SDK by clicking the link above. And click here to learn about the benefits of Web3 in gaming. And learn more about designing for Web3 in gaming by watching this video. Getting started. Now, as you start playing more Web3 games, one of the unique aspects of playing them is Web3 wallets. These wallets are an important piece to help you authenticate, to sign important transactions during gameplay, as well as holding your NFTs and currency that may go along with the game. One of the standards that you see out there is Wallet Connect. Many of the different branded Web3 wallets use Wallet Connect technology. This is just an easy open standard for developers to develop for and for these Web3 wallets to connect with. And you can see on the right MetaMask, which was one of the popular examples. The process of getting started in a particular game using the wallet depends, but most of them follow a flow something like setting up the wallet, then maybe funding the wallet if the game needs currency to get started. Then you'd start the game, authenticate using the wallet, and then periodically throughout the life of that game, you'll need to sign certain key transactions, things that are on-chain and immutable. Getting started with GenoPets. GenoPets is built upon emerging trends in the Web3 space. Gaming and DeFi. Many teams use an existing game engine for the 3D rendering, input, and other aspects of the low-level gameplay. Decentralized finance is among the first trends emerging from Web3. Hallmarks of this blockchain technology include decentralization, where data is stored across a network, transparency, where the data is stored in a public and open way, and immutability, where the data can be appended to but never deleted or changed. The combination of gaming and DeFi technologies is referred to as GameFi. Traditional gaming, especially AAA games, are built on a revenue model called pay to play. With GameFi, we see the emergence of play to earn, where the game users can earn real currency by playing the game. Games like GenoPets take this even further. Not just playing, not just earning. With GenoPets, players move to earn. This is a fitness-inspired game where your daily physical activity, moving around through the world in your normal day, helps feed into the gameplay loop. Players get started by going to the game's website, genopets.me, log in with a Web3 wallet, and download the mobile app. The app operates in the background of your phone, capturing your physical activity and movement and steps throughout the day. At least once per day before midnight, you open up the app and you bank the steps just by holding down the banking button. This converts your daily steps into energy, which progresses you in the gameplay. That energy, the KI token, and the gene token all work together for the game mechanics. For more on this, let's hear from Tom. Hey everyone, I'm Tom Ainone, Head of Sales and Customer Success at Morales. GenoPets has a few different items that contribute to its in-game economy. First, we have KI token. This is a utility token, so it's burned for performing different in-game actions. You can use it for refining crystals. You can terraform new habitats, basically mint new habitats. And soon you'll be able to use it for crafting in-game items. Next, we have gene. So this uh, gene token is used as the governance token. Basically, you can stake gene to generate more rewards over time. And it also allows you voting rights to contribute to 
the game and roadmap decisions along the way. Crystals are used currently to restore habitats. Habitats allow you to convert your energy into KI token. So without buying or renting a habitat, you will not be able to do that. But each day the habitat will actually decrease in terms of what they call the lifespan. And that requires that you use a crystal or multiple crystals to restore its lifespan over time. So there's a lot of things going on here in terms of the economy and the different mechanics, but ultimately these are the four core items and features of the in-game economy. Now that we've seen how to get started, let's take a look at the GenoPets trailer. The veil is lifting. Two worlds collide. The physical and the digital become one. A new adventure awaits. Summon your Genopet and step into the Genoverse to discover a new world where you unlock rewards for staying active. Move to Earn is here. Register now for private beta at genopets.me. Space is limited. Secure your spot today. Now let's look a bit deeper into the gameplay of Genopets. So traditionally, you address the needs of particular players and player types. You'll know that people coming to your game may be interested in different aspects of the gameplay. You want to consider each of them. Now with Web3, the opportunities are so rich for someone coming to your experience, they may not even fit the traditional player type, who's there mostly for the fun of it. You also have earners who are there to play, perhaps for the financial benefits of it, more than the gameplay itself. And then you have the investor type, who may never even open up the game at all. They would either invest through the NFT space, the currency space, or they could even fund earners and players who are in there doing the day-to-day -day experience of the gameplay itself. Now, a traditional game steps through a loop of gameplay, action, reward, and expansion. Let's think about the classic game Pac-Man. As Pac-Man moves through the maze, the actions here are to turn the character through the maze. The rewards are the pellets that the character collects, and for expansion, there's power pellets, special pickups that he can get that will change his abilities, temporarily giving him invulnerability, where he can chase the enemies. Now with Web3, we have a critical change here. Each time your character is rewarded, you're able to interact with the blockchain. Now this depends dramatically on the game itself, but some things you might be able to do after getting a reward of currency or NFTs or other assets, you could buy and sell those on the open market. You could perhaps stake them for increased income. And then there's governance opportunities as well. So at the heart of the gameplay loop is performing physical activity throughout your day, and then at least once a day, banking those moves into energy. The game builds better exercise habits. And using that energy, you can unlock all sorts of activities and progress throughout the game. The core game elements here are the GenoPet itself, which is a customized NFT that you own and care for. It progresses as you play. Habitats are an optional place where your character could live. Having a habitat helps to ramp up your progress level and make each step that you take more efficient in the gameplay. Now that we've seen getting started and gameplay, Let's take a look at the GenoPets design. Here we see a flow of the user experience through GenoPets. Free players can enjoy all the game end to end. Paying players are able to make progress faster throughout the game. Also, some activities are unlocked. The primary action is making steps through your physical world during your day. The reward is converting those steps into energy for use in the gameplay. And the expansion opportunities are to make progress with your pet leveling it up, giving it new customization and abilities. Paying players can purchase a habitat. This unlocks all sorts of advanced progress opportunities, more efficiency in each step that you take through your day, and unlocks other activities that you can do as seen here. Here are some of the high level game details. For more on this, let's hear from Tom. Hey everyone, it's Tom again. So as we've discussed, GenoPets is a move to earn game, which allows you to convert your steps into a number of different items. Um, it's really going to be interesting to see which strategies players take because there are a number of different options that you can use to be successful. 
The game mechanics start with authenticating or logging in using your wallet. From there, the action that's taken is stepping or walking to generate steps. Once you log those steps in the app, those are then converted to energy. So the reward is getting energy, which can then be used in a number of different ways. Um, there are so many different strategies that I'm going to hold off and cover that in a minute. But the reward of energy can then be used to expand your account by either leveling up your Geno pet to make it more efficient, to convert them into a token, to purchase land, and a number of other things. The standard free account for users allows them to automatically get a baby Geno pet. They can then uh, log their energy in the app and use that to generate XP or convert it to XP, which levels up their Geno pet. So that allows them to generate more energy over time, etc. So that's pretty much the extent of the free option. But if the player owns a habitat, that allows them to convert their energy into KI token. The habitat is uh, also pretty interesting because over time that habitat will decay. In order to reverse the decay, you need to use crystals to uh, maintain that over time. The crystals are refined from the habitat itself, and there is a small cost of KI token to perform that, that harvesting of the crystal. So it's very important to monitor the costs here, really plan ahead to see exactly how much your maintenance costs will be. And ironically, or surprisingly, as you upgrade the habitat, it will also get a little bit more expensive. So the upgraded habitats allow you to convert more energy each day. There's no cap or there's a higher cap. But basically, the interesting part here is if you can't convert the full amount of energy, sometimes you might actually end up losing. So it might be better for some more casual players to simply generate energy, store that up in their account over time, and then just rent a habitat from another player. And they will take a small cut, but at least then you don't have to worry as much about the maintenance costs and uh, monitoring those over time. What's also going to be interesting is crystals soon will be able to uh, be used for in-game crafting. So the crafting mechanic isn't released yet, but it is on the roadmap and seems like it should be coming out soon. So basically this is really going to add a whole nother layer of strategy and opportunity for players in game. Now that we're inspired by that game, let's look at how Morales Web3 Unity SDK could help us in development. If we look at the generations of the web, we're departing Web 2 and enjoying more and more Web 3 experiences. Now, it's not a perfect analogy, but let's look at the generations in games. With middleware technology like Morales and Unity Game Engine, we're able to create Web 3 experiences with features for our players that have never been possible before. Morales provides a single workflow for building high-performance dApps. It's compatible with all your favorite Web 3 tools and services. Now, Unity is one of the most popular game engines out there, and the Morales Web3 Unity SDK brings the power of Morales into your Unity projects. So what does every dApp and Web3 game need? Well, it needs to authenticate users, send and fetch assets, interact with contracts, and observe real-time events from those contracts. Morales does all this and more. To authenticate users with Morales, you use the Authentication Kit prefab. Drag that into your scene, and your authentication is handled. To send assets with Morales, we can use execute contract function, for example, to mint an NFT. And to fetch assets from the blockchain, Morales offers many options, including get NFTs and get NFT owners. To interact with contracts, Morales offers run contract function for read operations and execute contract function for read and write operations. And to watch for real-time events, Morales is fully compatible with your favorite Web3 tools and services. You can connect Morales to your favorite backend and receive live events in real time, the ones that your game needs. Now that we've been inspired by that game design and seen how Morales empowers game development, what will you build next? Level up your Web3 development skills by building weekend projects. Sign up at morales.io slash projects. Visit docs.morales.io to download and get started. Thanks.